One under tiles, round 14. Hey, this worm really is friendly to players. It even brought us our initiative for this round. How sweet. Turn one red. Red moves forward one to 47. And boy, is this one a long read. By the way, from now on, this dealie at the bottom shows you how long a tile will stay on screen, so feel free to pause if you need more time. Basically, once this tile is active, you can select the tile effect on a number matching yours in any universe instead of just the one you land on, which is really neat. I love how it only took everyone a few rounds after the universes were introduced to immediately start making them less of a pain to deal with. I feel you all, I really do. Red is primed to 43, which allows Red to abolish, or completely negate, any one tile of their choosing, and petitions to have Alpha Tile 37 abolished. Orange's catapult is promptly dismantled by all the king's horses and all the king's men. It will never be put back together again, we hope. Turn 2 Black. I'm taking a 2 this time, because even though it sounds like a lot of work, I really like the idea of introducing classes to this game. And because I'm a big D&D nerd, they're going to be based off of some D&D classes. I'll give you all a showcase at the end of the round and tell you the order in which players can choose them. Turn 3 Purple. Purple takes a 3, backwards, moving back 3, and bouncing once again off of tile 23 to land right back on tile 26. Which only summons a universe-destroying worm, no big deal. Their enthusiasm for world-eating worms is scary. Now there are two of them. When these pups fight over table scraps, the whole neighborhood deals with the fallout. Turn 4 green. Green lands on their favorite tile 13 again. The one that swaps tile numbers and effects with any other tile of your choosing. And this time they're targeting... Wait, what was that? Is that even legal? Huh. Alright. But I'll have to make a very important clarification. Green targets alpha tile 100. Now before anyone gets up in arms, here's my ruling. You have to land on tile 100 to win the game. And you may remember from an earlier round that using tile 13 does not count as landing on the tile you switched in. So there's a win condition in Limbo now, and it's scarily close to two of the players. Actually, I could win next turn with the right dice roll. And it's no secret that I've been getting first dibs on the rolls, because nothing says I can't. However, it's at this point that I have to admit something. I don't intend to win this game myself. I brought you all into this world because I want to see you succeed. I want to see you overcome abject chaos and impossible odds to win a game that doesn't want to end. It's the ultimate test of human spirit and creativity. I want to prove that there are still souls out there willing to fight, to achieve victory, even when it feels like it's always out of reach. If you win this game, then my faith in the human race is not misplaced. So, with all of that said, I will not be landing on Tile 100. My goal is to make this game a worthy challenge, so that a winner can emerge who represents the best qualities of humanity. I can't speak for green, though. Turn 5 orange. Orange moves forward 5 onto Tile 28, another tile affected by the rat catastrophe. This one is a booster, which will permanently double the speed of all. Of course, just like last time, all refers to every entity in existence, past, present, and future. However, this game will be over super quickly if this affects every player. I'm making the call that all refers to all entities in this universe, because each universe is its own plane of existence, isn't it? Also, speed refers only to one's movement role. So as of now, only orange gets the bonus as they're the only player in alpha. Turn 6 yellow. Yellow moves forward 6, scooping up blue because there's no limit on how much a helpful can move at once and lands on 33. This tile becomes the body color of the menace. Then it becomes a cheese tile. A little cryptic, but let's break it down. Note that you can't say green because that word has been deleted. But since the menace is green, this tile would become green and be destroyed immediately. Then it becomes a cheese tile in limbo, giving the rats something to move toward. Quite clever indeed. It's a regular Rube Goldberg. What happens when the rats hit the cheese tile there, yellow? Or would that be telling? Turn 7 blue. Blue accidentally won extra tile, so moves forward to 40. Gain a coin and a cookie, then move backwards two spaces. First coins, now cookies. You know, in some cultures, the two are interchangeable. What cultures? My culture. Now, because 40 is a multiple of 5, blue falls deeper down the multiversal rabbit hole and ends up in universe beta tile 40. This universe is practically a clean slate at this point. Remember when the game was much simpler circa round 2 or so? Good times. Anyway, what are you doing with this tile, Blue? Worlds collide. All universes, except Limbo, merge with Universe Alpha. And there's a bunch of rules for that to make the transition as smooth as possible. Third first, same as the first. I guess getting sent to beta was the last straw for Blue. End of round effects. We have two worms to move now. Hopefully they are merciful towards what's left of Universe Gamma. Worth noting, the yellow worm has grown in size due to eating more than 10 tiles last round. 
So it gets a 3d6 roll, while the purple worm gets a 2d6. That's a lot of dice. That's another 19 tiles eaten. Yeah, safe to say at this point that Gamma is toast. The worms share a nice dinner over fine wine, and Gamma is devoured. The worms spit yellow and purple onto Alpha Tile 26, and then they go back to sleep. They'll have doubled rolls starting next round too, because of the booster. The rats are starting to get bored. Alright, that's round 14 done, and you know what that means. Class time. Each one has two abilities, one passive and one active. I tried to make them fairly balanced, but don't expect chess over here. I'm only human. The Paladin is able to protect the righteous and punish the wicked. Aura of Protection allows you to save a player from being moved backwards, and Divine Smite allows you to send your enemies back where they came from. The Artificer knows the value of good craftsmanship. Tinker lets you tweak more of the board to your liking, and your Homunculus Servant can supply you with extra effects from the board to fuel your craft. The Rogue's worth is entirely dependent upon the worth of others. You can pickpocket your rifles to steal their boons, and with your sneak attack, you can stealthily steal their board advantage too. The Sorcerer is a powerful mage who revels in chaos. Wild magic sows the seeds of madness wherever you walk, and Fate Shift allows you to shape your own destiny. When it comes to mobility, the Monk is second to none. Their Step of the Wind triples your movement options each turn, and Deflect allows you to stay where you want to be. A Barbarian on the move is like a rampaging rhinoceros. Rage boosts your movement while punishing players you pass and bolstering your resistance. Your indomitable trait keeps things simple by limiting the number of effects that affect you. The Bard knows how to make a magical performance. With Bardic Inspiration, you can give your allies the courage to overcome their obstacles. And as a jack of all trades, you know little tricks here and there to make everything better. Whew, alright. Let me know which one you want, as well as what your role for next round is. You can use our class effect immediately after you pick it. Oh yeah, speaking of which, here are those rolls. You've got a bit more to think about this round, so as always, get back to me when you can. Join the Discord and do the YouTube stuff when you feel like you want to do that. For me, it helps. It, I, I like you when you do that. Please, thank you. See you next time. Good luck, players.